And I am starting with some uh, definitions about learning technology as we redefine the field. So uh, thinking whether we should be thinking in terms of this as educational technology or learning technology or learning design, and then thinking also about what this means for where the focus is and ultimately what's the point. So when I was thinking about what we mean by learning um, educational technology, I did go back to some of those early things of, of the 70s uh, that, that Nick was talking about. And in 1970, there was a, uh, an article by uh, Norman McKenzie and Michael Arrow from Sussex talking about the nature of educational technology. And the focus for them was that it was about the means by which we investigate, experiment, and improve teaching and learning. And I thought it was a valuable focus because it is about educational technology as a form of engineering. It's problem solving. It's trying to work out how to make things work better. And that was a very um, uh, important focus for me. Learning technology, as we started wanting to move the focus away from teaching and more towards learning and learners, that then became very important, especially as technology came along. And we started talking about studies of the ways in which digital technologies contribute to improving the quality of learning, but also the reach. Because one of the great things that um, digital technologies do is it allows us to get to places which traditional education can't get to. And then learning design more recently became important because of the focus of being able to use digital technologies to think about improving the quality of learning itself. What I'm wanting to do now is to, to reach back to some of what was in that original conception of educational technology as being about that sort of problem solving, trying to make it work better idea. And so reconceptualizing it for me becomes thinking about what is the teacher's role in all this? The focus becomes so far away from the teacher onto how do we help students learn, which is ultimately the point of it all, that we're beginning to lose the sense of, so what is the role of the teacher? What must the teacher do? And in many of the policy expectations and indeed commercial uh, efforts to provide teaching and learning, the focus is much more on direct access to the student, enabling the student to do their own thing using new technology. Because they have direct access and because the web is huge and has all these resources, therefore learners can be left to do it on their own. No, the teacher is absolutely critical. So I want to sort of drag some of that back towards a focus on the teacher and thinking of teaching as a design science, recognizing exactly what Norman McKenzie and, and Michael Arrow were talking about in relation to that sort of engineering aspect of trying to build something better. And the teachers are there every day in the position to be able to do that. So I do think we, it's important for this field as it's reconceptualized, as we redefine it, to think again about focusing on the teacher and enabling the teacher to be able to make the difference. Because ultimately the point is, and there's many ways of expressing it, we used to call it improving teaching and learning. I think this way of phrasing it for me says everything that we need to say to enable every learner to achieve their learning potential. It's every learner and it's no matter how hard it is to help them achieve their learning potential and it is their learning potential that we're interested in, in the context of, of formal education. And if we think about what is the difference, what's going on as we're, we're moving through this welter of new technologies, which are going to keep coming and are going to keep changing education, and the kinds of differences they're making, is that we're, we're shifting from the focus on uh, teacher-led classes to much more guided group learning. And that's where we should see a shift in the balance of learning activities that, that, that students are doing. And similarly, there'll be an increase in personalized learning, collaborative learning, self-directed learning. But all of that is certainly being technology driven and the technologies are enhancing all those different forms of learning, but the teacher is critical to making that happen. So I want to come back to that. Now thinking about frameworks, well, I like frameworks and I've tried to use frameworks um, from the, uh, the Rethinking University Teaching book originally, developing the, um, a theoretical framework that talks about teaching and learning as this iterative cycle um, between the teachers and the learners and between the learning environment and learner and between peers and learners and their peers 
and looking at what other learners are doing. And all of those different continual cycles are what enables the learner to make that connection between concepts and practice. So that's what I work to for thinking about how to make learning work better. And the point of that framework is to try and embrace everything we know from Dewey, Vygotsky, Piaget, Gagné, Brunner, Papert, Martin, Bransford, whoever your guru is in how we understand teaching and learning. Each of those um, theories or approaches to what makes learning work is represented somewhere on that um, framework so that in each case we can say what do we actually mean by inquiry learning well it's that relationship between um, the, the, the learner trying to understand iteratively what the teacher has to offer uh, what resources are available how to understand this theory with constructionism it's the te it's the learner continually trying to make things work in within a learning environment and getting feedback on that to enable them to generate and modulate their understanding so that's the way in which the, the, the thing works. And the point of it is to challenge the technology. Because we should be able to say for each technology, well, how much does it do for us? Podcasts were very popular. People were talking about them all the time a couple of years ago. Well, that's all they do. They just do that bit of conveying the teacher's conceptions. Web resources are very important, but they don't do anything to do with helping learners work with each other. They don't do anything to, to do with learning through practice. Webinars and forums very important, simulations and games. All of these technologies are great technologies, but what exactly do they contribute? So we've got to, from education, have a framework that allows us to say, OK, just how good are these technologies? What actually are they doing for us? So you've got to have a pedagogy-derived framework for taking to whatever the system has to offer. So that was the point of that. Another kind of framework is the Entwistle and Peterson framework, which talks about um, influences on student learning. And this has um, <clears throat> a wide variety of influences on the quality of learning achieved, approaches to learning and studying, per perceptions of the teaching and learning environment, what's going on with university teachers' subject knowledge and pedagogical beliefs, influences of the academic community and validating bodies. So this is taking it out wider and wider to describe teaching and learning as a whole system. And I think we need that kind of framework as well, partly because making teaching and learning work better means we've got to understand all of those aspects of it and how technology can, can, can improve that. And if you think about where something like that framework sits, well, it's a tiny part of that whole thing. And whatever framework we come, come up with is going to have that sort of character. So what does this all mean for the 21st century teacher? How is the teacher's life changing? Well, if you take this as a sort of pretty comprehensive selection of activities that any teacher is likely to be engaged in, from class presentation through to administration and professional development, that distribution of their time is also going to be shifting. And what we're expecting to see is that we get an increase in small group guidance, a decrease in the class presentation kind of approach, more of that small group gui guidance kind of approach made possible by learning technologies. We should see more individual marking and guidance, more personalized um, teaching. We should see more collaborative development, which is a way of improving the, um, the learning experience because teachers are working together to make it as good as possible. Um, less individual personal preparation and more preparation which is a form of redesign so that teachers are sharing and developing together much more acting like engineers and scientists who do share their best teaching their best ideas teachers should share their best ideas as well so we we also expect to see something like that happening again as a result of the um, the, the, the possibilities now open to us and Shifting, therefore, from overall class teaching to more personalized approaches to teaching and learning, enabling every learner to achieve their learning potential will require that. Whole class teaching won't do that. A shift from individual design to co-design of, of learning, where teachers are no longer just the craft amateurs working with their own particular class. They now become part of a professional body all working together. And there has been a move towards that. But what I don't think we see are the technologies to help teachers. So part of the remit of the world of educational technology is at least to understand the role of the teacher in all of this and to understand how we help the teacher. 
because the teachers are getting very little help. A lot of stick, very little help. So it's a way of, of, of including in the debate. I suppose that, that's why I was so pleased to get Nick's invitation to come and talk to Bira, because Bira is precisely the kind of community where we want to, to bring them into thinking about what should be going on here. We are all trying to improve teaching and learning. That's what Bira is all about. And as I look around the audience here, I'm delighted to see old friends and colleagues, but it does mean it's the usual suspects. Where, where is the rest of Bira um, in this debate? We want to, I mean, it would be great to have one of Nick's surveys going to the Bira community to say what you mean by educational technology. And I bet you what they will say is ICT. Basically, that's where they will park it, is all those people doing stuff with, with, with computers. Because it's not yet embedded in the warp and weft of the way that we think about education. So part of this process is to, I think we have to focus at least on seeing teachers as an innovative professional learning community, where they are helping to redefine teaching as itself being a design science. It means recognizing what teachers do every day. That's what they're doing. But they do need to also be building on each other's designs, working much more the way in which scientists and scholars and academics do. And as academics in higher education, when we're doing research, we certainly build on each other's work. When we're doing teaching, much less. We have to articulate our pedagogy just the same way in which um, uh, an engineer will be able to describe the way a system works and how I've made it better. We need to describe how we've done some pedagogy and made it better. And the advent of new technologies means it's even more important to do that because there are so many things we could possibly do. And then adopting, adapting, testing, proving, all of those engineering and design ideas are part of the process of making teaching and learning better and sharing, building on each other's work similarly. So educational technology must also support teachers learning through collaborative technologies in order to support learners learning with technology. So I think educational technology is a good term for us. It's also pronounceable, by the way. BJET is pronounceable, which is great. Even if you put training in there, it's still pronounceable. BJULT, no, no, it doesn't work. So to conclude then, I think part of what we do is we re design, we reconceptualize the field of educational technology, is to recognize teachers themselves as being educational technologists. And that's what Bira needs to recognize, is that's precisely what teachers are. And we need to focus on enabling them to do all these things, to, to use whatever theoretical frameworks and conceptualizations and research findings we have, support them in that process of learning what we know from what we know. And it means teachers using technology to support their own professional activities, having de learning design tools which enable them to share, which gives them intelligent support, which links them into relevant research. The technologies are there, we just haven't put them together to help teachers do all this. So that's part of what uh, my own research is doing, is creating something called the learning designer, which is precisely designed to recognize teachers for being the engineers they are and giving them the tools, the power tools to make that difference. So that, to conclude then, teachers, I think, should be seen as being major players in what educational technology is all about. The key to technology innovation, it isn't just about focusing on the learner. It is also about focusing on the teacher enabling the learner to achieve their learning potential. Thank you. Thank you.